Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Dr. Kamran Sandhu from the Research Incubation for Sustainable Development. Today we will talk about data analysis and interpretation. It is very important and students and scholars usually face a lot of problem while doing this segment of the research. So it is actually giving meanings to collected information for the purpose of drawing conclusions significance, implications and findings. In other words, it is very important step in the process of research and in all research studies there is data collection, analysis and interpretation. Usually there are two sub models like one is inner model and we say it it is a structural model Independent variables like A and B are independent variables and we say them exogenous latent variables. And dependent variable, it is endogenous latent variable. An exogenous variable has path arrows pointing towards endogenous variable will be having at least one arrow coming towards it. This slide is showing a model having indicators so a b c these are latent variables hidden variables and if we would like to get results then we need indicators if you see the if chart you will find that there is inner model structural model as we discussed in our previous slide and you can find outer models like a b with indicator is outer model c with its indicators or items, you will find another out model. So, we can say that conceptual model is a combination of inner and outer models. There are two different types of models like reflective and formative. Reflective model. If we see that indicators are highly correlated and they are interchangeable, they are actually reflective. And importance of reliability and validity increases. So we have to check reliability and validity of the indicators. So you will see that arrows are moving from construct to indicators. So this is reflective model. Changes in the latent variable directly cause changes in the assigned indicators. So if there is any change in the construct, it will directly change the indicators. Number two is formative model. If you see that indicator cause the latent variable and are not interchangeable, they are formative. They may be positive or negative or there may be no correlation among them. So you will see arrows pointing from indicators to construct. Changes in one or more of the indicators cause changes in the latent variables. So one point needs to be in mind always. You have to see the arrows. So if the base of the tail of the arrow if the tail of the arrow is connected with the construct so it is reflective and if tail of the arrow is connected with the indicator leading towards construct so it is a formative model next point is how to assess partial least square structural equation modeling output so if your model is reflective you have to check all these tests for your research like Number one is target endogenous variable variance. This is for reflective model. Then next is inner model path coefficient sizes and significance. Outer model loading and significance. Indicator reliability. Internal consistency reliability. Convergent validity. Discriminant validity. Structural path significance in bootstrapping. So we will discuss all these tests in upcoming slides. On the other hand, if your model is formative, then you will explain about target endogenous variable variance. You will talk about inner model path coefficient sizes and significance, outer model weight and significance, convergent validity, collinearity among indicators. Look at this slide. So the yellow color is showing latent variable C having a value of 0.29. Before going to the detail, you can have this value with the help of lot of softwares available. 
like Smart PLS, Adenco, SPSS, Lizrel, Amos. So you can find these values accordingly. So very first one is coefficient of determination, R square. It means that A and B, how much variance creating in C? So it is 0 0.29, means 29%. So if you will see the range, so 0.75 is substantial, 0 0.50 is moderate and 0.25 value is weak value. Another one is showing path coefficient. In other words, we say it is beta. So this slide is putting focus on path coefficient, that is beta value. Acceptable value is 0.1, but in some cases higher value 1.5. This slide is showing a model in which A and B are independent variables. As I mentioned earlier that we can use different softwares to get these values. Here you can see that arrow is pointing towards path coefficient which is beta from A to C. So value is 0 0.267. However, acceptable value is more than 0.1, means 10%. Here comes reliability. In reliability, we see correlation between variables and indicators. So, first one is factor loading. For reflective model, actually this is a reflective model which has been taken as an example. Arrow is pointing towards 0 0.767 and if value is higher than 0 0.70, it is preferred. However, in exploratory research, 0.4 or higher is also acceptable. Another one is internal consistency reliability. So, this value, the range of this value is also required higher than 0.7. But in exploratory research, 0.6 is also acceptable. Here you can see that 0 0.367 has been marked green because its value is lower than 0.4 or 0.7. So you have to remove this indicator to get the good results or get the significant results. Here comes validity. It is comprised of convergent and discriminant validity tests. There are other tests but these are the main we can explain and we can show to the viewers or other people the results and they will believe it that these are okay items. Like convergent validity. Convergent validity is actually average variance extracted and its threshold should be higher than 0.5. Second one is discriminant validity. It says that square root of AVE of each latent variable greater than the correlations among the latent variable required. So finally, here is the summary table. So first one column is about latent variables like A, B, C, a and B are independent variables and C is a dependent variables. These variables are loaded with indicators like indicator 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the three latent variables having uh, some indicators. So first of all we have done and we have analyzed coefficient of determination which is R square. Value is given on the table. Here you can see the value which I have uh, mentioned earlier that 0.75 is substantial, 0 0.50 is moderate and 0.25 is weak. Then comes indicator reliability. So indicator reliability will see the factor loading in reflective model and weight in the formative model. So all these values except this one 0 0.36 are above 0 0.70 which are acceptable. Next point is composite reliability and its value is 0. 7 or higher. So here I have written some values of A, B, C like 0 0.756, 0 0.879, 0 0.802 all values are above 0 0.7. Next one is average variance, average variance extracted. So if values are above than 0 0.5 these are acceptable values and following column showing accordingly. Then comes path coefficient beta and we have mentioned and we have gone through that 0 0.1 and above is acceptable. Table is showing higher than these values. Then comes bootstrapping. So this is actually checking of significance like path coefficient. So if the value is higher than 1.97 we will say it is significant. 
but more higher is acceptable and preferable so you can see 4.360 or 2.219 both are above 1.97 so result shows that these two are significant values thank you very much and i hope Today's lecture will help you a lot to understand data analysis and its interpretation. You have to follow some layout. In my next lecture, I will share a template that how to write a research article so that you can adopt this data analysis and how you can explain it. If you have any question, you can email me on the given email address or you can comment on comment box. Thank you very much.